Okay, so I just noticed uh, that the update for April updates has been released and this is for uh, North American servers only so this video will only be uh, for those people but if you're playing on global you can also watch because this is eventually coming to your servers as well. We'll only cover the most important updates but I skimmed through, uh, this is huge, some of the changes are game changing actually so definitely stick around and let's go. So first of all April 5th uh, we're getting the new continent finally, the sixth continent. This means we will unlock additional study rewards for all three summoners. It will unlock the new repeat requests. Well, I'm not even sure what the rewards are, but definitely excited to see that. There seems to be a new uh, field boss that is called Tira, and I think you'll need to. Oh, I think it will work similar to one of those pango like big frogs, right? There seems to also be a new transmog for 3 star fairies and I've visited the Korean server and I know that you get these for free after doing a login event for 7 days so I'm assuming that's how we get them as well. And it looks like developers released a video about how they created the uh, continent. It doesn't really showcase much of the content itself as far as like there it's bosses and stuff like that. It just uh, more describes on how they made it, uh, the design choices and stuff. So I'll leave it in the description. You can watch it there. Okay, and uh, all summoners are getting one additional skill. So Orbia's first skill, it seems, will be changed to inflict wide area damage center to the enemy target and inflicts continuous burn damage if the area stuns the burn target on hit. So additional stun is added. Water skill inflicts white area damage centered of yourself, inflicts movement reduction and knockback on the first hit and roots the enemy with the setup probability of the second hit. And the wind tornado inflicts damage centered on the enemy target three times and the target moves for a certain period of time dealing damage to the enemies as well, inflicting additional shock damage and if the target has more than a certain number of debuffs, additional damage that penetrates defense will be healed. Wow, Orbi is getting so many changes. Uh, the water skill inflicts wide area damage centered on yourself, inflicts movement reduction and knockback on the first hit and lose the enemy. Okay, wind tornado. No, wait, wait, that is, wait, that is. Oh, oops. Uh, Kina, fire, fade, blessing. Applies continuous healing while stacking fire energy on yourself three times and grants recovery and accelerates skill cooldown to summon most. That is huge. That is huge. Uh, water 1 applies 3 stacks of water energy on yourself while inflicting movement speed and attack speed reduction to the enemy target. Heals allies and greatly increases the attack speed and hit chance of teammates with high attack speed. Um, this one doesn't really signal as really good to me. A wind 1 uh, heals allies while stacking the energy on wind of yourself 3 times. If the heal target is a summoner, the amount healed is increased. This is the accuracy rate of all allies centered on yourself and grants immunity to teammates with HP above a certain percentage. That is huge. Immunity? Clear Fire Blaze inflicts uh, damage and burst to enemies in front of you and if the target is a creature, the received critical damage increases. If you heal over time, you can silence, en si silence enemies on Cliff? Nah, that is disgusting. Or is it just creatures? I'm not sure. It says enemies. And you do get heal over time on the third skill, so if that means that he straight up silences with the third skill, that's a bit busted. Frozen armor grants the energy of water to oneself, I reduces damage dealt from surrounding enemies and freezes enemies with reduced attack power with a certain probability. While possessing the energy of water, there is a certain chance of freezing enemies that hit you. And eh, not a big one. Ah, Wind Boomerang increases damage on enemies in front of you and instantly increases your defense by the number of hits. After that, additional damage is dealt in proportion to defense and if the target is a creature, the final damage is increased. If your demons is above level, a certain level, shield is applied to nearby allies, excluding yourself. Mm, not a huge fan of this one as well. Fire seems to be the biggest change for sure. Okay, and yes, Path of Growth is finally getting those hard mode added and uh, we will be able to acquire 6 star runes uh, from the dungeon. It seems like we'll need to be fighting a new boss in it. Also, it looks like with the Contana content release, we're getting 3 new outfits, well, one new outfit for each summoner, basically. So, here they are. Okay, so runes. Uh, first of all, we're getting new runes, so destroy and shield runes, so shields. 
uh, basically create a shield uh, before the battle starts based on your attack and destroy runes allow you to destroy uh, the enemy HP permanently based on the damage you dealt. Also, six star runes are finally getting added and they will be available from Path of Adventure or by doing Rune Alchemy. And Rune Alchemy, as you don't know, is uh, you can combine three runes of a certain grade. So, for example, three legendary five star runes, and there's a small chance that it will be increased to six star. And of course, if you combine the same uh, type, so meaning three rage runes, uh, the rune you get will also be the same type. If you combine random ones, you will get a random room as well. Then I changed the expedition, which we finally get because we really needed and global already had this. Is a hard mode consisting of one level will be added to expedition content and the rewards will be increased. And the most importantly, special expeditions are finally getting changed to seven a week from 20 a day. So no more half an hour of farming, especially if you had trouble completing that dungeon. You can go with more safe teams and just uh, try to finish the higher level instead of just dying and dying and over and over. And yeah, you can also get six star runes. And uh, this is insane. Flame hearts. I know people are struggling with these. And flame hearts is a super rare drop. So this is another source to get it. Battlefield will be changed to a seasonal system uh, that progresses on a weekly basis. The rankings will be calculated according to the season. At the end of the season, depending on your rank, you will be rewarded with sky stones and crystals. So uh, we're getting a ranking system for Battlefield. I hope that means that the games will be balanced uh, more uh, on the matchmaking side. However, it doesn't mention, so I'm a bit scared for that because that really needs it. Galagos Ruins is of course getting improvements to the magical order, meaning that you can choose uh, stuff like which elements uh, to get buffs for. Uh, hard mode hopefully comes out where you can get a harder dungeon with more rewards, but the details here are very uh, vague, so we'll see how it works in more detail when the update drops. And yes, we're getting automatic gathering and mining finally. It will be unlimited and the amount you can gather per day will increase based on your account level, but it is still a start, especially if you're really focusing on some professions. So that should help a lot. Skystones will be added as support rewards for elite raids. Ooh, ho, ho. Yeah, people will love this. I know that for sure. Okay, and now jumping over two weeks after that update, so April 19th, uh, we're getting the guild town. So this is, I already talked in the developer video, which I uh, watched. And basically it's a town where all of your guildies can uh, sort of walk around. I suppose there will be NPCs there and uh, you can also make buildings, uh, however you like. So each of the members can have a building, for example, should be pretty fun. Yeah, you need guild level 5 to unlock the guild town, so it shouldn't be a problem at all. Alright, yeah, functions are here. Hot spring, fishing ground, explorer HQ, and other guild related functions, okay. When you can search for fish types through the explorer? <gasps> is the lizard... So I'm assuming the explorer is the lizard man uh, guy, right? So if you can get fish from there, that's pretty huge. Okay, our Curl Girls and Mystic Witches are getting transmogs with the fairy tale concept. So we'll see how that works out. Uh, no pictures as of now. Share skill points within your account. Applause for this one. Finally, finally we can actually try out different summoners and not feel like we're playing with a baby summoner where, for example, my cleat is like 170k. And the max I could get with my orb is like 50k, like about time, yes. Okay, so similar to gems, you can now combine uh, different enhancement items and have a chance of upgrading them as well. Wait, whoa, 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 whoa. Auto clear function for dungeon. So imagine like you have auto battle in the, not auto battle, but quick battle in arena. It looks like the same will be happening for uh, Essence Dungeon, Path of Gold and Expedition. Look, after successfully creating 10 times, if the difference between the required combat power is more than 40%, for example, for Essence Dungeon, that's definitely easy to reach. For Path of Growth, uh, you may need like high 500,000. That's definitely reachable with 6 Tyrones. 
You can immediately obtain a box by consuming the auto clear ticket without battling. You don't. And yeah, auto clear ticket will be added as a daily task to someone in your past. So it's limited, but you can auto clear. Assuming that they will give us enough for the daily refresh dungeons at least, but that is huge. That saves a lot of time. It looks like uh, the Brawl Arena ban phase is changing a bit. So instead of picking four units and banning one, uh, you now pick five. Uh, you ban one and then you choose a uh, three that you want to deal with. So this sort of impacts team building even more and uh, Brawl Arena will be even more focused on generalist units that can perform on their own. Because uh, with the ability to banish two units, uh, there's pretty much no chance that you will be able to build uh, a cleave team or something like that, a sort of a CC team or something like that. So yeah, super excited to cover these when they come out and I'll see you in the next one.